presentation is on Java for JavaScript developers. Don't panic. It is not that difficult. Uh, there are some, I'm trying to gonna go over some one-on-one uh, -on -one relationships and some gotchas. So one of these things is not like the other. So what type of language is it? JavaScript is a dynamically type OOP scripted language or interpreted, where Java is a statically type OOP programming language compiled. What does that mean? JavaScript con is converted line by line as plain sec text in the browser, whereas Java is converted in one shot into machine code into the browser or the VM. So what's your entry point? Your entry point in JavaScript, you can run using any file name you want. Start with any file name.js, but the de facto is usually index.js. In Java, the JVM, the Java Virtual Machine specifically is gonna look for the public static void main string args. That's your only option, so you kinda gotta deal with it. <laughs> so to Java or not to JavaScript? Pass by, the long debate, pass by value or pass by reference? Sorry to bust anyone's bubble, but everything is passed by value. So in JavaScript, all function arguments are always passed by value, so read carefully. When you pass an object, the value of the variable is the reference. So because of this, when you pass an object and change the members, those changes persist outside the function. So if you pass an object, making it look like it's passed by reference. Where in Java, everything's passed by a reference value, per se. So the variable holds these bits that tells the JVM like how to reference the object in memory. When you pass those methods to the argument, it's passing a reference, which looks like this in a memory location. So you're passing that memory location reference value, because that value to the reference is not the reference. Simply put, when you pass a primitive data type, you contain the value of the primitive data type itself, and when you pass an object, you contain the value of the address that tells the ABM how to get to the object. So simply everything is passed by value, literally everything. So here's some code examples. This is an example I say when you pass the object, you can, you're passing the object and it's passing the reference. So you can pass the values like the, the X and the Y and switch those because it's outside of the function, but you're not technically passing the value itself, which was the, the, the object. And same thing with this. This is actually um, the same thing with here. You pass my reference value. So when you pass here with the won't swap, when you swap it since you pass my value, nothing actually changes. Primitives, we'll get to numbers later. Uh, in JavaScript, there's string boolean null de define all primitives are objects. They're kind of like molecules, they always contain something else. Uh, you have properties and methods, and primitives are coerced into objects so they can access the properties. Where in Java, it's like they're built in data types with a single value. So if you want to add properties and methods, you have to create a class for uh, which is a template for the objects. So for instance, if I've had created this uh, return this this uh, function onto the prototype or string, assign A and B string and initialize B with A with that prototype. If I was to do type of A, it would be a string. But if I type B, because I initialize with the function, it will actually be coerced into an object. Whereas in Java, this is actually an interview question I've seen before on basically you have to get this to print out pass. Because of what I was saying before with the integers, they are technically passed by value, so they're pointing to the value of the reference. This actually won't pass, even though it looks like the same, because they're pointing for different places in memory. So numbers, JavaScript numbers, Java ints. You get one int 64-bit floating value, and in Java, you get the 32-bit integer to default so that's it. You get no floats, no doubles, no bytes, no shorts, no longs. You get one action. You get one numeric value that fits everything your heart desires. Numbers, that's it. Or in Java, you can kind of pick the optimized 8-bit shorts, ends, longs, and the defaults are basically the end and the double. Package manager. Had this conversation. Most people didn't even know Java had a package manager. Um, yes, I do know about Gradle and Ant and Ivy. There's tons of them for Java. Uh, when you want to initialize it in JavaScript, you would run npm init and then whatever you want to name your, your uh, application. And then you run npm i, npm install if you have um, a package configuration file, which I'll go over next. Uh, these URLs, npm js, I just gave a little screenshot so it'll show what it looks like. And it'll kind of go over exactly what you're installing. And same thing with npm, 
is an XML format. This is how you initialize it and install. So in JavaScript, you have the package.json, which is your configuration file, and your dependencies will be your name and then the version number, and they'll be stored inside of the node modules folder and the cache and the .npm. Where in Java, it's an XML file where you have the group ID artifact the version and all the dependencies will be stored in a slash target directory. So that's kind of like your one-on-one -on -one mapping. So this is kind of what it will look like, your JSON and your palm.xml where you would have the dependencies, which will be the, the file name and the version number. And then over here, you would have the group ID artifact version for each one, which you can, any dependencies you need, you can kind of go to that maven repository to get that information. Imports in JavaScript. You have to export it if you want to use it in another file. And then when you import it in the other class file or in the other file, everything is separated in the file structure by slashes. Or in Java, you don't export it, you just add it as part of the package and you import the package. So if you want just a particular class, you can put the class, if you want to get everything from the class, then you would just put a star. And instead of the slashes, then it's just the dot, the dot structure. Fat arrows versus lambdas. It's a fat arrow function. I don't really have a call in a lambda in JavaScript, but basically any ES5 function can be converted into an ES5 arrow function. Whereas Java, it's a little bit more in detail. Lambda kind of has requirements. Um, to utilize a lambda function, there has to be an interface that has one abstract uh, function uh, unimplemented. Basically, it will just have the public, the, the name of the function, whatever the parameters are, and whatever the, uh, the it's gonna return, and no body. Then the lambda expression and the, sync and the method, both the parameters have to match and the return type have to match. So Java gave you a lot of functional um, functionals, uh, interfaces that you can use. A supplier, you can take a no param, returns an object. A consumer, you take an object, returns nothing. A predicate is probably one of the most that might be a little bit more familiar to JavaScript. It's kind of like a filter where you create a function uh, you say I only want uh, A is less than B, and it'll pass as boolean, so those are the only ones that'll be returned. So you take an object, returns a boolean. Um, function, it'll take an object and return an object. Then the fat arrow function, technically both are basically the same thing. Uh, so you have a function, uh, sum, this is the ES5 syntax. If you want to go into the lambda expression or the fat arrow function, you basically get rid of the function name you take the parameters, the, the equal and the greater than sign, and return. If it's one single line of code, then you basically can re, you know, get, remove the return in the brackets. If it's one param, you can get rid of the parentheses and it just goes down from there. And the lambda function in Java, this is the, would be the ES5 or the old version 1.7 and before, where these are the steps you would have to create to basically make it a lambda expression. You copy the parameters, and get rid of the, uh, the type. So you just literally copy this down. You ignore the function name and declaration, it's anonymous. You have one single uh, hyphen with the greater than, and then you literally just copy the, the, the body and get rid of the uh, return word. And you get integer.compare as length, and that's how you create a lambda function in Java. And that's it, it was a pleasure, but my time is up, so I'd like you, thank you all. <laughs>